What is the solution to plastic pollution? Are we distracted with recycling? of small big call is for me, a relatively small person in real life, to give out a big call, a call for help, so we can find solutions to problems that are affecting our world in a bad way. that has ended up being used in many industries, from the medical industries to the consumer industry. Plastic is derived from petroleum. One big problem with plastic is that it is non-biodegradable. This means, unlike wood, which can decay naturally, plastic can't, because a crucial manufacturing step makes a material that is unrecognizable by organisms that usually break up bits of organic material, and thus this makes plastic a very, very big problem to us. Once we're done using those plastic bottles, we carefully sort them in the blue bin with an infinite triangular loop that we know as the recycling symbol. It comforts us with the idea that we can all put our plastic bottles there and they'll be recycled forever and ever for the rest of the time. But this sad thing is that it's usually turn up not being recycled after that or get turned into plastic bottles that are new once and never again and those that never ever get recycled they usually end up in the world's landfills and worse the ocean so much have ended up in the ocean that it's expected by 2050 there will be more plastic in the ocean than fish in 2015, the U.S. recycled about 9% of its plastic waste, and since then, the number has dropped even lower. The vast majority of 8.3 billion metric tons of plastic ever produced. 79% of that has ended up in landfills or scattered all around the world. And as for those plastic shopping bags, less than 1% of tens of billions of plastic shopping bags in the U.S. each year alone are recycled. Why are some kinds of plastic never recyclable? Well, because even the tiniest scraps of food or other rubbish put into plastic can result in them never being recycled. And some kinds aren't just designed to be recycled. They're designed not to be recycled. What does recycling plastic bottles involve? Well, it involves them being sent to material recovery facilities, otherwise known as MRFs. These material recovery facilities put them into bales where they are sent to reclamation facilities. Reclamation facilities grind them and wash them and then sell the recycled pet. <coughs> Wait a minute, not that pet! Recycled pet! What happens to recycled pet you may be asking? Well, most of it gets turned into fiber. Fiber can be used to make pillow stuffing, carpets, the occasional fleece sweater, and much, much more. Fiber by far is the largest customer of recycled pet, coming in at 45%. The next largest consumer of recycled pet are plastic bottles, coming in at 30%. Next are clamshell containers at 12%, and finally, the other 12% gets turned into something else. Wait a minute. That only adds up to 99. What happens with that other 1%? Hmm. Mystery. Ooh, that could use some solving. Why does recycled pet usually get turned into fiber? Well, that's because bottle-to-bottle -bottle recycling can be extremely expensive and it requires colorless, contaminated, free plastic. Can recycled pet bottles be recycled again? The answer is a yes, but the more they 
get recycled, the less the quality has. And in case for things like carpets, pillow stuffing and all that, once plastic gets recycled into all of those things, it's the end of the line. They can't be recycled again. They end up in landfills or in the ocean. So you may be thinking, what problems are we solving by recycling? Well, we're solving a few. One problem we're solving is the problem of litter. Litter is the key cause of many fungal and bacterial infections. And recycling also generates jobs, which can help a few people get above the poverty line and live a normal life. Now we come to the most important part of this video. What is the solution to plastic pollution? Oh, that rhymes. Are we distracted with recycling? Yes, we are. We're long past the point where we think cleaning up the ocean and the land and throwing plastic bottles in the recycling bin can do anything because it can't. It can't because there's far too much plastic now and ultimately it has nowhere to go. Recycling isn't the only R. There are also refuse, reduce, reuse, and repair. And we have to recycle properly. One big way we can make a change is by making sure that, that there are laws that are more strict on recycling. Based on everything we've discussed now, we can break them up into three categories. One, recycling less. Two, recycling properly. And three, needing big changes in the rules of recycling. Let's talk about them all now. First, we have to recycle less. We have to reduce the number of things that end up in our recycling system by first refusing, then reducing, then reusing, and then repairing. First, we have to refuse. We should refuse single-use plastic. Refuse to purchase products that are overly packaged. Refuse plastic cutlery, drinking straws, cups, and more. Replace all of these by having more durable counterparts. You'll be using fewer resources and have less trash to throw away. If you don't want things as gifts, you can just tell your family and friends. There are hundreds of ways that we get gifts that we don't want. And eventually they end up in the recycling or trash anyway. Second, we should reduce. As a society, we need to disconnect happiness from the act of purchasing goods. We all have a consumption problem. We have to dramatically reduce the number of materials we buy. In the case of plastic, we need to buy fewer items packaged that way. This is a tough one, I know. Since so much items are packaged in plastic, like daily essentials, it can be very tough. But try your best. Third, we need to reuse. We should buy durable versions of our most frequent single-use items. We can wash our plastic Ziploc bags or keep things around for alternative uses. If you're bored, we can make recycled crafts. That would be fun. Finally, repairing. Many things can be fixed instead of recycled or thrown away. You can glue your old plastic mug repair your cracked phone, and much more. Two, we have to recycle properly. When we do recycle, we need to do it properly. Contamination of recycled items is due to wishful and negligent recycling. We have a problem of adjusting to putting so many things in the recycling bin that we forget it's the recycling bin. We need to stop putting things in the recycling bin that aren't recyclable. Here are a few tips for that. Not sure if you can recycle something? Call, call the people who manufactured it. Do not put any of your plastic bags in the recycling bin. Hand them back to the store which you bought them from so they can be recycled properly. Third, to make sure that contamination can be avoided, try cleaning your recycling. They don't have to be 100% spotless, but try to clean them as much as possible. Third and final.
finally, we need big changes in rules. First, we need the non-toxic materials rule. Any products with chemicals in them that can be toxic should not be recycled so we can ensure that those chemicals can't affect our bodies and the environment over and over again. Next, we should have a law on banning single-use plastic, like those pesky plastic bags. We should have products that are designed for longevity and that have advanced disassembly and can be reusable. Next, we need to extend producer responsibility. We need companies that produce plastic and stuff like that to financially support recycling. Next, we need deposit and return laws. For everything that can be recycled, or everything that's plastic, there should be a small fee. And if you return that plastic, or recyclable material, that fee gets taken off and you get a refund. We should have more recycling booths to collect plastic recyclables and stuff like that. We should be able to have them placed in supermarkets, gas stations, and many other places. This would greatly increase recycling rates. Finally, we need minimum recycling content laws, which ensures that there is a percentage of recycled material that we that we need to use in said product. Hmm. I feel like we we're really forgotten something that it's not plastic pollution. Oh yeah! That plastic! Eating bacteria! Ooh, I wonder how Oh yeah, it only eats plastic slowly. <gasps> I can use magic and I can put a spell under those bacteria to make them eat the plastic even faster. Ooh, now all I need is that magic. Ooh, I have an idea. You young and old scientists over there can help me by suggesting ideas for how we can stop plastic pollution. If you liked the video, don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell. Bye! This is Jeff signing off from Small Big Call. Don't forget to stay in touch with my next big call in my next big video. Bye!